He's unmuted right now. Um, okay. Dobry den. Okay, uh, so we shall start now. Thanks all for coming for more networking fun in this room. I'd like to welcome Tadeu Cascardo, who's going to tell us more about uh, Open vSwitch and user space. Thanks, and go ahead. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, Open vSwitch, uh, the architecture, uh, design of how it works, how, how the, the demons work. Um, and I, I had a hard time uh, figuring out um, at which level I would show you that. Um, I wouldn't like to show you lines of code that's too boring. Um, um, lucky you, I won't show you. But if you want to, um, <coughs> you can start digging because it's like a 400,000 of lines of C code, um, about 800 f files. Uh, including uh, C headers, plus another uh, 600 files of test hits and, and building and stuff like that, uh, documentation. Um, I only know a very tiny piece of that, so um, I'll, I, I am wrong on the internet right now, right? <laughs> um, so please correct me if you get a chance uh, later. Um, and sorry, that's not a talk about GPDK, if I'm going to mention about that. Um, so for those who don't know, and just so we get an introduction, what we're going to talk about that. Um, so Open with Switch can be pro programmed with OpenFlow. It's a network switch uh, for virtual networks, most, mostly. Um, it can be used for... Uh, real hardware switches. So I'm going to show you 
how that could be done. Um, so if you have plans in your future to work on a hardware switch with OpenFlow, uh, good luck. Um, it supports uh, data path acceleration for Linux. Um, Jerry has uh, talked about uh, some some about that. Um, I'm more. I'm going to talk more about uh, user space here, but I'll show you how the design allows that data path acceleration to work. Um, and since it's a virtual switch, you don't have the ports hard coded as in a hardware. So you, you need a way to configure those ports and OpenFlow does not allow you to do that. So they built another protocol. It's an RFC. Um, it uses JSON RPC. Um, so there you go. Uh, JSON is embedded in your suite just right now. Okay. Um, so it uses something called OVSTB, which I'll show you um, a little. So here's a, um, well, it's not a 10,000 mile, okay? It's uh, three kilometers. Uh, three kilometers view of Open vSwitch. So you'll see there um, OVS vSwitch D is the main component here. Um, when you're using Linux, you set up the flows. Um, so there's uh, that communication right there. Um, it has the OVS DB server, which serves all of the uh, configuration of the switch um, and the yellow boxes are the utilities that you can use. So OVS OFCTL is basically a very, uh, very small open flow controller that you can use to program o OVS, uh, v switch D. Uh, OVS VSCTL is a very small uh, OVS DB client. It's used to program the OVSDB server, which talks to vSwitchD, so uh, it, it notifies vSwitchD that the configuration has been changed, and then uh, vSwitch reacts to that. Um, and the DPCTL uh, allows you to carry the state or change the state of the data path acceleration in the kernel itself. So here's your uh, three kilometers view, um, and um, for, before I forgot to mention, open flow controllers, that's how you're supposed to uh, program vSwitchD. Um, so here's a one meter view. Um, I, I, I consider it putting the complete call graph of the code here, um, but, I, but I guess it would take uh, many hours to generate. Okay, so. <laughs> um, so here's a little sketch of some of the things. So I won't bother you with this because it's hard to read, okay? Uh, there are better ways to read into this. I'm gonna show you. That's some ARSCII art, okay? Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you a better view of these, exactly these, um, and going to explain what every piece here does. But. Um, there are many things here that are missing because from one meter you can see them. Okay, it's all zoomed. Um, so you'll see all of these and then I realize that's a lot of stuff and you've got to take a step back and start looking at how everything works. Uh, I'm going to mention some of the features that you may be interesting and that you may, uh, I, I may give some pointers on where to find the files to work with that. Um, so here we go, OVS to B. So what is it? No, it's, the, um, it's the protocol, as I mentioned, it's documented on RFC 7047. Uh, it allows you to create new data paths, new bridges, um, configure the controllers that are going to be used to communicate with those bridges. Um, <coughs> Then you create and add ports to bridges, create queries, um, quality of service, and collective stats. So I'm gonna give a, <coughs> a quick demo on that, um, on how I use OVSTB. 
So let's take a quick look here. Um, okay, so so OVS via CTL is the OVS to be client that talks to the database. So here we are not exactly talking to the suite daemon. We are talking to the database server. Uh, so it shows here just a summary of the data paths and bridge that we have. We have a bridge BR0, which has support foo one and VX0, uh, which has some options there. Uh, bridge out BR, which has uh, two ports, an internal one and uh, uh, Ethernet interface. Um, so here's how you get, for example, the stats for ENS3. So you have uh, zero collisions, number of bytes received, bytes transmitted, and all this stuff. Um, so the OVSDB allows you to carry stats as well. Uh, it's a database, it has a schema and stuff like that. So uh, GET allows me to read a table, which is called interface. I want the column of the table, which has the ENS3 name. Um, <clears throat> and I want, um, I want the line ENS3 and I want the column statics. Okay? Um, so <clears throat> and then you can set, for example, OF port request. Uh, allows you to tell that for that given port, you want OpenFlow to recognize that port as the number three. So um, you may, ha may have seen a lot of OpenFlow rules that specify that um, a given flow is going out for port three. So what is port three? So what's that port? So that's how you specify that ENS3 is going to be given that port number. Um, so um, OpenFlow on vSwitch, the, uh, it's not persistent. So you're supposed to use uh, an OpenFlow controller for that, OK? Um, packets can flow uh, to and from the controller itself. So uh, switch daemon may receive a packet and have a flow there that tells it, well, I don't know what to do that. or the controller has more logic to decide what to do with that. It's given to the controller um, in band or out of band, um, and then you get, get it back. Um, <clears throat> OVS has a lot of extensions. Um, most of them really, really needed because uh, OpenFlow um, is not, it's not enough for a lot of things that OVS does. So um, one, one of the, uh, the examples, uh, I guess that uh, they have a hard problem that sometimes the packet flow to the controller and the controller gives it back to the switch daemon, which should not uh, uh, follow all the tables all over again, should uh, continue from where it stopped. So there's a, an extension that's planned uh, and it's probably going in 2.6. Um, basically, OpenFlow allows you to configure a set of matches and actions. So for a given package that uh, matches that, that given flow, uh, you're going to execute some actions. Uh, and one of the funniest actions there is is the normal action. Because uh, the OpenFlow specification does not tell much about what you're supposed to do with the normal action. It's basically, oh, it's like what a normal switch would do, okay? <laughs> so what a normal switch does. Um, and in OVS case, we do IGMP snooping, for example. Uh, so that's one of the things that normal action is going to do. And uh, if you do not use it, you're going to lose it, okay? So um, here are some examples. Um, if you've been to, uh, well, I've been to like three of three talks already that showed some open flow rules. So um, gonna gonna save you from that. Um, 
So porting. Um, so here we go into more detail into how the vSwitch daemon works. Um, so uh, there's this file, porting, uh, it's a markdown file uh, where you can read uh, most of the things that I'm going to talk here. Um, going to try to go into some detail uh, and try to um, show you how exactly it works. So the switch daemon basically reads from the database um, <clears throat> and talks to OF Proto. So OF Proto is uh, something that's below the demo itself. So, okay, ASCII art. Uh, <clears throat> much better than the other one, right? Um, it's the same thing as this one, okay? <laughs> it's the same thing. Uh, this one is much, much better. So, um, so basically, this switch is talking uh, to OVSDB server, getting all the configuration, and then it uses OF Proto to tell the um, underlying layer to set up the bridges as they're supposed to. Um, okay, that's easy, right? But uh, what does OF Proto provide? So basically, it talks to OpenFlow controllers and talk to an OF Proto provider. Um, so the OF Proto provider uh, can be almost anything. So, for example, it could be a hardware switch. It could, could even be another switch to which you talk uh, using OpenFlow itself. Okay? Um, uh, it would be a very nice driver for OF Proto. So, you receive OpenFlow and talk to another OpenFlow switch. Okay? It would be very fun to do that. Um, <clears throat> well, and the other thing that OF Proto does is talk to NetDev, which is a very simple library which wraps communication with a NetDev provider. Um, and there's a lot of them. So if you want to add a port to a switch, you set it up in the database. Now the switch daemon knows that you need uh, to add a port, tells that to OF Proto, OF Proto creates a NetDev device, uh, gets its MAC address, saves it up in the database. Okay, so there's all these things going on here, um, but when you have this look, it, it looks very, very simple. Um, but then you have this one, right? Um, shows almost the same thing, but then you realize that uh, below the OF Proto, we have a real provider. Uh, below the NASDAQ, we have real providers. Um, this uh, OSC art comes from porting uh, as well. Uh, very great piece. So how do you implement an OF Proto provider? There's a lot of, lot of layers inside of that, okay? Uh, that's why you need 400,000 lines for OVS. Um, so, uh, the more about DPIA, e, DPIF, so the data path interface, is, is the only OF Proto provider that we have upstream. Of course, we have a lot of uh, OVS users around. Uh, many people probably have ported uh, OVS to hardware switches, but they didn't provide anything upstream. Um, so that's the only provider that we have the code there to look at and see what is the F proto provider is supposed to do. Um, and DPI if is very, very complicated. Um, as you notice here, you have OF proto uh, DPI if, then you have a DPI if, and then you have DPI if provider. So three uh, drivers that you can uh, use for OVS. Um, the good thing is that DPI if provider is very, very nice. Uh, it should work with the NetDev as well. So NetDev, uh, besides allowing to create ports, allows you to receive and send packets to those ports, um, those network devices. Um, 
if you have a net de such a net depth provider, um, then you're all set up. You can use OVS. Um, I'll show you some of the uh, drawbacks about uh, using that, uh, but uh, it's really, really possible to use only that and get everything set and working really, really nice. Um, GPDK uses that. So how do you introduce GPDK support to OVS? You just write a net dev provider, that's done, okay? Uh, you don't need to worry about writing a new DPIA provider or a new OF proto provider. Everything is being done for you. Um, so basically, um, one of the DPIA providers is DPIA net dev, and how it works is that it um, reads packets directly from the interface, from the net dev provider, um, and then deals with that, okay? So I'll go more into, um, into more detail for that. Um, so, uh, and one of the advantages of using that is the number of features that you, uh, that you have. Uh, for example, bonding, LACP, multicast, snooping, contract, all of that is available if you're using DPIE. If you are going to write a new OF proto, you're gonna do that all by yourself, okay? So <clears throat> these set of features here, and a lot, lot more features are only available if you're using DPIE. If you're not using, if you're going to write your uh, new OF proto, then you need to rewrite all those features or count on your uh, data path switch to provide that. So <clears throat> here, uh, here we can see uh, uh, a clear separation from the control plane and the data plane, which is OF Proto. Because OF Proto talks to the control plane using OpenFlow and it talks to the data plane below that. So your data plane needs to support uh, all of those features. And that's what DPIE does. Um, one of the DPIE providers is uh, DPIE Netlink. Talks to the Linux OVS module, uh, set sports, and flows. Basically, that's what it does. Uh, it receives packets that miss those flows, and then set up new flows. I'm not sure if I have, um, yeah, I, well, I don't have anything showing. Um, um, an image of that. So basically, well, in fact I do, that it's here. So, um, <clears throat> so the data path is here in the kernel itself. When you, whenever uh, you receive a packet on a Ethernet port, on a physical NIC, for example, so that packet is going to be matched uh, with some flow there. If it does, okay, there are a set of actions that need to be um, processed. If, for example, it's like um, just output to the other NIC, okay? So data path is going to do that. It's all in kernel space, um, really, really fast. Um, but if there's no uh, flow set up here for that particular packet, uh, then it's going to user space. So now the DPIE netlink, it receives that packet and gives it to OF Proto DPIE. So now it's, now this OF Proto provider knows about OpenFlow, right? So now it's going through all the OpenFlow rules, uh, all the OpenFlow actions, it's going to build a lot of structures, data structures, and going to push that to the kernel. And well, I need to execute those set of actions for that particular packet as well. So uh, that's how it works. Um, but it needs to go through all the open flow tables because all the acceleration is right there in the kernel data path. Uh, for DPIE NetDev, that's not how it works. So um, 
There's no, uh, the kernel is not involved in the data path. So the, of course you have uh, device drivers in the kernel space. Uh, in those cases, you are either using uh, TAP devices or AF packets to read all those packets from the driver. Um, so, in that case, the <coughs> so the GPIE NetDev uses the NetDev library and the NetDev providers as well. So it uses those to read every packet. So all packets go through user space. Uh, if you're using NetDev DPDK, you're using DPDK, so you don't, do not have to uh, go through the kernel space. It's all in user space. Um, you have a device driver running user space and reaching all those packets from uh, hardware, um, giving them to OVS. So you have a NetDev DPDK, a NetDev Linux, which uses TAP and AF packets. Um, so it reads those packets, goes to DPIE NetDev. It has some caching of the flows there. So there's some acceleration here, um, some what we call exact match catch, so EMC. So if you find the flow there, okay, that's a fast path, going to process that, uh, get to know what set of actions are and execute them. Uh, I'll put to another port eventually. Um, so it optimizes flow lookups. If there's a miss there, then you gotta go all the way up to OF Proto GPIE, which is going to process all the open flow rules uh, and um, set up the cache for exact match caches. Okay. <clears throat> so that's great, but you really need a really fast CPU. Okay, so if you're using GPDK, all those things are going to happen on software. So in your CPU need to be really, really fast. So um, imagine that you have a hardware switch that's doing all fast processing, and then you need to go to software, which is running on a control CPU, which is n not even sure if they have more than a single core. Right? So you're out of luck in that case. So only use DPIE if NetDev uh, or even DPIE if at all, because if you have uh, any misses, if you have a DPIE if provider and you have any misses, you're going to have to process on the OF Proto DPIE if all in software. Uh, and there have been some cases reported that people are trying to port to OVS. And oh, when I, whenever I miss some flow, it's pretty dense law. Uh, they had a, a very slow uh, CPU, control CPU, so it's not going to fly. Um, okay, so um, <clears throat> any questions so far? Okay, so um, I promised a demo involving um, VMs, containers, and IPv6. Um, I'm going to do it, but not as I planned. Um, There's going to be some IPv4 involved. Um, so uh, the tunnel user space, it means that uh, we don't have Linux involved, so we don't have uh, VXLAN driver on Linux. Okay, so packets are coming in from the from DPDK, for example, and now you need to send that through a tunnel. But what's a tunnel? You have to. It's not a new interface device. Okay, so you need to just uh, add a prepend a, a header and send the, the the packets through another interface, and then you need to write that all in software, in user space, on OVS. So I'll show you how it works. 
So here's my setup. I have two VMs, um, two network namespaces, one in each VM, and that amounts to this complex setup. So it should be very simple, but um, we have here a port in the container, which is connected to a port on the host, which is in fact a VM, which is connected to a bridge, which, which has a tunnel port, which goes through another bridge, which goes to an Ethernet port, which is in fact Virtio. So that goes to a tap device on the real host, and then through another tunnel there. Okay, and then you have the same setup on the other VM. Um, <coughs> you may be asking yourselves why didn't I use Plotnet CFG? I did. <laughs> So uh, this is one of the VMs. Okay, um, didn't get the time to read it, but um, yeah, shows our uh, network namespace here. It's really nice. Okay, um, there's some bug here that you need to fix, right? <laughs> uh, that's, that's it's, the, it's the Fedora 23 version. Okay. So, uh, so you have here a demonstration of Plotnet CFG. It's really, really nice because you can see here that you have the network namespace, which is named Foo Chu, and it got that right. Okay, and I, <laughs> it's really, really nice. Uh, so we have a loopback device there. Uh, we have a virtual, uh, uh, virtual Ethernet there that's connected to another one outside of the network namespace, um, where we have a loopback device. Didn't quite catch, uh, catch the switches, right? So um, let us see here, yeah. So when you're using the user space data path, I'm, uh, I'm using the user space data path. So it's not a master. Yeah, That's need to work on that. Yeah, not supported. Not supported. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, we were supposed to we were supposed to see that uh, this interface here belongs to this bridge, and these these other two interfaces here, Fuchu and VXLAN zero, belongs to BR zero. Uh, the reason we didn't see that is that Plotnet CFG, um, <coughs> it, uh, right now this current version uh, carries the kernel to see if um, an interface is a master or a slave of the other interface, which is not the case here because you're not using the kernel to connect to those interfaces. Um, but you notice, well, I, I, I'm impressed that it got VXLAN zero. You know, because it's not a real, it's not a, a network device for Linux. Okay, so it, it's just an OVS. Um, <clears throat> what else we got here? So, okay. So, in fact, here's this setup. We have this bridge here. Okay, and let's see what it's mapped to. Beer zero. You see, it's a tune device. If you're using the kernel data path, there's a special driver, which is hoping we switch. So it's, it would not be a, a tune device, but an open with switch device. Uh, the same happens with the other bridge. Um, ENS3 is a virtual net. So um, the user space um, daemon reads packets from that using AF packets, uh, special socket family. Uh, VXLAN zero is not a network, uh, Linux network device. So it's just a virtual information there in the, um, in vSwitchD. 
OVS NetDev, well, that's... Uh, so whenever you're going to create a new data path, uh, OVS tries to create it on, um, create a new data, uh, um, a single data path for the whole system. So you can have multiple bridges, like we have OutBR and BR0, but even if you don't have any of those, if you're using the NetDev um, <coughs> uh, DPI, it's going to create OVS NetDev. If you're using the kernel data path, it's going to create OVS system. But there are basically uh, ways to communicate with the uh, data plane on OVS and try to create new bridges. <coughs> the fact that we have OVS NetDev is uh, an artifact of that. Uh, it shouldn't be here, so uh, if anyone has uh, any intentions in, on contributing to OVS, um, there you go, we have a chance right here. And for plotnet CFG, uh, there's a good debugging session for that, right? And supporting the user space uh, data path is a nice contribution as well. Okay, so um, let me show you here. So I have this OutBR bridge because if you're going to use a tunnel with a user space bridge, it needs to go through another tunnel. Uh, OVS requires that. Um, it's kind of a limitation, but um, we talked about that. If anyone wants to talk about that, we can talk about that later. Uh, but well, it needs to go through another OVS bridge, which is in user space as well. So here, here we have OutBR, which is connected to the single uh, NIC that we have on this um, virtual machine. This other bridge has the tunnel, which goes through um, this remote IP address. Could be multiple hops here, but it's directly connected with the um, Linux bridge outside of the VM. And there's this foo interface, which we with Plotnet CFG, we notice that it's connected to some IF2, something like that, which is um, so. Here's our container VF0, which is the single interface there. Um, has this IP address here, 200.1. And then we have the same setup on the other VM. Okay. So, What if I run TCP dump inside the container and then I ping from inside the other container here? Okay, it's working. But what if TCP dump is run on the bridge itself? Okay, so. Um, that bridge is connected to, to the virtual internet port outside of the container uh, and connected to the, the tunnel. So it's not going through the bridge because it's not going through the local port of the bridge. So uh, the bridge, um, it's a virtual internet device which is read by AF packets. Uh, VSwitch daemon gets that a packet, realize that it goes through a tunnel. It's not going through a, not a Linux network device. The tunnel is completely inside the demo itself. Uh, it does all the encapsulation by itself. Um, puts those, um, so it realized that it needs to go through OutBR, which is the other bridge. Uh, but as you'll notice,
keeps running here, right? Uh, so as you notice, it's not going through the bridge either because um, the user space daemon realized that, okay, it's going through this bridge, but which port of that bridge? Because it doesn't know to go through the local port inside the kernel, uh, which is a tap device. Uh, and if it did go there, it needed to go back to user space, so it's useless to send it to the tunnel. So I realized that it needs to go through that port. Um, and here you have it. So in fact, what you see here is not a ISMP packet. You see it's a UDP packet, a VXLAN. A TCP dump uh, knows how to show uh, the inside of VXLAN packets. And then it shows us that, well, there's a ICMP echo request inside that uh, VXLAN packet, OK? Um, so notice here that the kernel uh, is only involved in the first port and the last port. You don't have to go through the local ports of the tunnels at all. So it receives that from um, the virtual internet device and throws it out through the um, the NIC device. So basically, that's the flow here, which the packet traverse. So it goes through the, um, the other endpoint of the container. Uh, the VM endpoint of the container goes through user space, which sends to the VM NIC. Then it goes through uh, the uh, VNAT0 and VNAT1 on uh, my host itself, okay, which, is, which are connected through uh, Linux Bridge. So um, any questions, address to discuss at openvswitch.org, OK? <laughs> uh, seriously, any questions? Uh, yeah, because uh, the Linux bridge uh, is using STP, I didn't want to um, show it up. I, I wanted to make it clear that we had the, um, the ICMP packets here. I didn't want them to show up and uh, make it confusing. Where's the Linux bridge? It's on the host itself, so... Um, Yeah, yeah. So it's it's outside of the VMs on the host itself. Uh, have VNAT zero, VNAT one, and VBA zero NIC connected to the VBA zero uh, bridge, which is a Linux bridge, not open the switch here. Okay. Okay, we are run uh, run out of time. So thanks a lot. Thank you.
Hello, everyone. I would like to ask you to squeeze into the middle so we can pack as many people as possible into the room. So if you have free seat next to you, please move to the middle of the room. Find new friends. Don't be shy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is, that is man or I think I have to I have to I have Okay, welcome everyone. Let me introduce Raja Chopra and he will give you a talk about networking in containers. The floor is yours. My, mic check? Yeah, it's working. Okay. Thank you everyone for showing up. Uh, I'm going to be talking about networking with containers. I had my name put here and then I removed it because I was supposed to do a demo and then it wasn't working, but hopefully it's still working or not working, whatever. Don't blame me if it doesn't work, so my name is out. <laughs> 